Assalamu alaikum, you're watching Views and News and I'm Faisal Rahman live from our Islamabad studios. Today we'll be talking about uh, this very important statement and coming from none other than Mr. Gregory Stanton who founded the Genocide uh, Watch group in which uh, he mentioned something very alarming. What he said was that uh, what we witnessed in 1994 between April and July of that particular year in which it is believed that around 800,000 to 1 million uh, people were killed in Rwanda and this was primarily after the killing of their president in which uh, a plane was shot down a lot of people died in that and right after that he died on 6th and from 7th April onwards this genocide started who was killing had no reason to kill and whoever was being killed had no idea why they were being killed the hands and the feet were chopped off of people of children, women, elderly, so many uh, villages were torched and people were burnt alive and this was witnessed uh, for about three to four months especially once the, the six Belgian soldiers were killed and then the Belgians in fact removed around 2500 of their soldiers from that area eventually it resulted in this. Now when we talk about the genocide, the plan genocide that means that a certain segment of society is targeted. We all know that Houthis were in majorities whereas Tutsis they ruled over them for almost 100 years and uh, what we all witnessed was that uh, since they were always supported by the Belgian government and uh, they were lesser in number but they were holding all the important positions and once that started what people witnessed was unbelievable. Now today the same man who in fact uh, raised his voice at that time also now is saying that similar can happen in India but interestingly when we talk about 80 percent of the Hindus living there around 20 percent minorities about 17 18 percent Muslims living out there uh, the government in power which is of Hindutva they have their extremist mindset they are openly calling out and saying that the Muslims uh, should be subjected to torture should be subjected to genocide and they should be eliminated where will it lead? We are talking about around 20 crore Muslims living in India and if this has started which most likely will or rather has at a larger scale if it starts at that level it is going to bring in a lot of problem but unfortunately nobody is talking about it not even a single statement has been issued by the leaders of the Muslim world at the end of the day it's either Turkey or Malaysia and perhaps Pakistan that raises its concern but this could lead to an absolute disaster. So we'll be doing our show on this, the Muslim genocide in India. But before I introduce you to our panelists, our production team has prepared a report. Let's watch that first. Narendra Modi's era, while barring the Indian claims of being the largest secularistic democracy of the world, is feloniously inculcating the structural and cultural violence in the veins of the Indian society, making it a dangerous place to live for the minorities, specifically the Muslims. Ranging from the open appeal of the genocide of the Muslims in a three-day Hindutva conclave in northern Haridwar, attacking the churches and cancelling the licenses of Mother Teresa's charity centers, selling of Muslim women on an online application declaring them as bully buy of the day are some of the examples which show that how the venom of the religious extremism is manifesting as direct violence against the minorities in India. The consistent transformation of a secularistic India into a chauvinistic and extremist state in Modi's fascist era is making it dangerous for all the minorities inhabiting India. This concern was also mentioned by President Genocide Watch Dr. Gregory Stanton in the United States Congressional Briefing titled Call for Genocide of Indian Muslims organized by the Indian American Muslim Council. He claimed that the situations of minorities, specifically the Muslims in India with the full awareness of its leader are the same as one in Rwanda which actually attributed to the Rwanda genocide and this may well happen in India, the Foreign Office spokesperson Asim Iftikhar Ahmed on Sunday while quoting the Genocide Watch's warning call about the killings of Muslims stated that Dr. Stanton's warning was based on data accessed on a scientific model of 10 stages of genocide and according to this model India has crossed all the 10 stages raising the serious alarm for the safety of more than 200 million Muslims in India. Now to talk about it let me quickly introduce you to our panelists we have with us in our studio on my right is Ed Vice Marshal retired Ijaz Malik Saab who's a senior analyst sir thank you so much for your time you. and uh, uh, on Skype from London, UK, we have with us Dr. Shahid Qureshi Saab, who is a senior analyst of the London Post 
and a regular uh, writer, sir. Thank you so much for your time as well, uh, Mr. Qureshi. And uh, in a little while, we'll also be talking to Dr. Farhan Mujahid Chak, Professor of International Affairs at Qatar University. He is the Secretary General of Kashmir, uh, Civitas and Associate. Now, sir, let's start off from you, sir. A very important statement from a very important person. And uh, around 1989, he also talked to the uh, Chief Justice of Rwanda, who was himself a Hutu, and he said, okay, what is this going on? I mean, there are uh, fears that uh, this could happen. Uh, eventually, we also spoke to the President, but as we all know, sir, nothing was done during that particular time period. And then later, the President was killed uh, in a crash, which most likely they believe that uh, was it, this plane was shot down. And so, right from the word go, the genocide started. It is generally believed, sir, that uh, mostly uh, the Hutus and the moderate uh, Tutsis, NTWA, these were the factions which became the target. Few say 800,000 to 1.2 million people were killed during three months. And what a brutal massacre that was, sir. Because I remember, as I earlier told you, that yeah. we were doing a research paper. Uh, I was studying at that time. So when we learned about it, sir, because there wasn't internet at that time, information flow was different, but it was horrible. Sir, similar conditions are prevailing in India now. When we listen to the statements issued by the BJP leaders, especially towards the Muslims and the minorities, sir, they're not allowed to practice. There are a lot of uh, issues related to them. These people in power and the majority with such a hostile attitude, sir, they are openly saying that we will eliminate the Muslims. And now again, the same man comes up and says uh, that uh, this is what I see happening in the future. Let's start off from there. Thank you very much, Faisal. And I think the same person, uh, uh, he is very qualified to give his comments because uh, he has drawn certain uh, comparisons uh, between the two uh, areas and two you know, uh, time frames of history uh, in the modern uh, uh, human history. And unfortunately, there are a lot of similarities. Uh, like uh, Indian government, uh, you know, still harping on the tune of uh, being a largest democracy. Uh, still, they are, uh, you know, uh, trying to say, uh, you know, at the, they are in a denial mode internationally. But uh, contrary to that, the dichotomy is that uh, the same BJP government uh, and their ministers and uh, some of the activists who are very prominent in their uh, uh, political core, uh, you know, they are seen uh, in these videos. They are seeing sponsoring those people who are, uh, you know, uh, trying to radicalize uh, their, uh, you know, uh, terrorists to uh, take on uh, the minorities. And just imagine, uh, you know, they have already, you know, done their homework. You know, they, uh, you know, started in Assam. They are doing it in uh, Indian uh, occupied Kashmir, and now in India. Uh, Sixteen to Operation seven. Blue Star, sir, against the Sikhs. Wasn't yeah, that a yeah. genocide? So it is not bringing in tanks. So it is not only. You know, some people try to uh, say that it is only for Muslims. It is against all minorities. So the you know writing on the wall is the choice is yours. Either you convert uh, to the Hinduata. Uh, uh, you know, doctrine and start to practice and uh, you can survive in this uh, modern, non-secular, extremist India, otherwise leave. So that is the choice which is given to the citizen of the so-called largest democracy in the world. That is very unfortunate, but this is the way it is. So let's see uh, what uh, Dr. Shahid Qureshi has to say about this particular uh, statement that was issued by Mr. Gregory Stanton. Uh, Kureyi sahab, your take on the same point, sir. For uh, uh, inviting me. Uh, what happened in Rwanda was the French sponsored uh, genocide. Uh, uh, report we see now. Uh, it, the report on TRT uh, with hundreds of pages of uh, analyzed of uh, Rwanda genocide. It's how the Tutsis and uh, the other was provided on 
munitions to kill each other. And there was a colonial uh, dimension into it, whereas we know that France has got a lot of interest in Africa. And France is still taking a few billion dollars every year of the tax uh, from a uh, few African countries. Then we saw the apologizing of Germany to uh, Namibia, and they offered three billion dollars in, uh, in 30 years, uh, and they apologized. They, they said they're sorry that genocide happened. With regards to India, India has passed uh, on which premise the Iraq and Afghanistan was attacked, and the BMDs. Uh, and the killing of own people and using of the chemical weapons against it. So, if we look at the Indian model, what uh, India... Kureshi sir, there is, there is some problem uh, uh, with your audio. It's breaking up. So, what uh, I would, in fact, request my production team is to get back to you again, sir. And I'm so sorry for that, but we'll just get back to you in a, in a minute or so. Uh, but uh, talking about uh, the same issue, sir, we also have with us uh, from Qatar, Dr. Farhan Mujahid Chaksab, as I mentioned that he's the Secretary General of Kashmir, Sabat as an associate, Professor of International Affairs at uh, Qatar University. Assalamu alaikum, Dr. Saab. Wa alaikum assalam. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Sir, pleasure to talk to you. Now, since we are talking about this genocide that might take place, that has already started in India. Sir, Muslims are being targeted. Uh, certain laws uh, are in place now which are totally against the minorities in particular again I'll say the Muslims and then these statements that are being issued by the BJP leaders to eliminate the Muslims in India either they'll convert or they'll be killed sir I want your take on this sir how do you see this how Middle East is in fact looking at it well this is a, a fantastic point that you raised and just from the onset I want to make a distinction between India and Kashmir and I think it's very important for us to constantly kind of emphasize this distinction in our narrative, in our narrative development. So we emphasize the difference of the two localities because this serves our purposes and undermines what India has been doing for so long. But nonetheless, to be clear, there are genocides being planned in both India against the Muslim community and the Christian community, to be uh, exact, and in what we refer to as Indian-occupied Kashmir. There are genocides being planned in both areas. And what we see now in the, the meeting uh, of, at Hawi, uh, Haridwar, in which the BJP leaders are encouraging people to kill Indian Muslims, we heard the same type of language from BJP representatives in Jammu just months ago. And this is something that is not new. This is something that has been ongoing and especially for the last two years, since August 5th, 2019, that they've become louder and louder. And remember, there's been a language of the final solution. So it's just the mainstream media in the world has picked up on this disgusting display of bigotry that the UN has talked about it, that Professor Gregory Stanton, who I've spoken to on a few occasions and who was supposed to uh, travel to Sarajevo during our, uh, our, our tribunal, but unfortunately due to the Omicron scare, couldn't. But nonetheless, what I want to kind of get across to all our viewers is that India has been, and the bigots within India, to be precise, have been seeing this type of language for a long time. And they've been reminding people, certain BJP representatives have specifically mentioned, don't forget Jammu. So we have this Narrative, don't forget Jammu, in which an estimated, officially 237,000 people were killed, but it could be upwards of 500,000, which completely changed the demographics of the Muslim-majority area. And then we have uh, people, even embassy people, the, the council in New York, talking about the final solution, using this kind of terminology of the final solution, which is clearly genocidal. And now, again, these meetings, but these are not one-offs. Now, even though the Indian Supreme Court has issued some kind of a lukewarm fake statement uh, criticizing this kind of language, it's meaningless and it's an attempt to deflect 
on the seriousness of this type of language. The world was witnessed to the crimes that happened in Bosnia, to the crimes that happened in Rwanda, and we are now watching it unfold. According to Professor Gregory Stanton, inside Indian-occupied Kashmir, eight of the ten levels of genocide have already started taking place. You know, there's ten steps towards all-out uh, genocide. Uh, the Bosnians include another one, which is called genocide denial. And also there's another one they include called triumphalism. But nonetheless, genocide denial is already happening when they denied what happened in Jammu. And inshallah, our organization is working on establishing the first you know, Jammu and Kashmir Genocide Memorial Center in which we'll have documented all this stuff. But our thoughts on it are it's alarming. The world should wake up and confront this type of bigotry, stop it before something that could lead to a nuclear conflagration takes place. Now, Dr. Sab, another very important point um, that I want you to throw light on is, since you mentioned about, uh, you know, there is a proper step-by-step -step observation. So, eight out of those uh, ten, they're almost complete. So, that means that 80% of the homework by the Indian extremists that has been done. Now, so one important point, if you remember the, the conflict of Bosnia, uh, that right. was uh, somewhere around 1992-93. Mm -hmm. And I remember there were a lot of Bosnians who came to uh, Pakistan also as refugees. Uh, right. They were, uh, most of them were, in fact, uh, they were kept at the Haji camp uh, in Rawalpindi. And I remember there's a place called Sadar in Pindi where there was this restaurant and we were sitting. And I happened to meet a lot of these youngster Bo Bosnians over there, youngsters primarily. So I happened to meet a few young boys and can you imagine their fingers were chopped, the fingers of the hands and the toes of their feet so they could not walk. They were not killed. This is what had happened to them and not one. They said hundreds and thousands of youngsters are either killed or um, are, uh, you know, uh, in fact, their hands or their fingers, it's been chopped off. So primarily, this is exactly what genocide means, that you leave uh, an impression uh, as an oppressor on the others that, see, this is what we will do to you. So that is going to remain in the minds of that individual uh, groups uh, forever, I would say, as long as they live. So perhaps is this an ideology, sir, you believe? that can still prevail in this 21st century, sir, where you know, we, we are I talking about the SpaceX and so much more. You know, we make claim that we've moved beyond. You know, they even actually said that in the, in the 19th, like in the, the 20th century, was it possible in front of the whole world to have a major city being under siege and bombed for three years? So the truth is we need to wake up and realize that let's have no illusions. It is a very real and likely possibility that unless the international community steps forward and, and confronts what's happening in Indian-occupied Kashmir and confronts what's happening in India, it will happen. It's not a question of, you know, there's a possibility, yes or no. It will happen unless we continue to shine the spotlight on him. And I think what you mentioned about the disfiguring of the Bosnian you see, that was, you can look at it as one step. What they wanted to do is to be, to kill and not leave any traces of who they're killing. So what they were doing, and one of the things so, so tragic and disgusting about genocide is systematic. It's extremely well organized. You cannot kill tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of people unless there is a great sick, almost satanic level of planning. And that planning was done in Bosnia. That planning was happened in Rwanda. And that planning is ongoing right now within Indian occupied Kashmir and by the Hindutva fanatics in India. We need to recognize that there is great planning. And so when they're cutting off the limbs, or when they're blinding, it's just a prelude to what is expected to come. All right. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Farhan, uh, for your uh, comments on this very important issue. Now, coming to you, sir, uh, as rightly mentioned, 
that there has to be a proper planning which is there sir and then you have certain individuals you know whom you assign a task to go because everybody can't kill sir mm -hmm. imagine a statement uh, i think i did program on uh, the same kind of an issue about 2 to 3 weeks ago sir and there were certain uh, bjp extremist leaders they were issuing statements and they were in fact inciting violence and they were saying that you know gather a group of let's say 100 or 200 people arm them so well that you know if you can have a mobile phone which is worth 5000 rupees forget about that keep a cheap mobile but make sure that you have a good gun good weapon good weapon so that you know if we can arrange 200 people or maybe a little more you can go after anybody and you can kill i mean these are the squads they are preparing sir i mean and they are assigning uh, certain uh, jobs to them and the job is to kill uh, the minorities not only the squad or a focus on military application or force application you know what faisal what they have done is that earlier they would uh, you know talk about uh, uh, the muslim era mughal era and uh, you know build a narrative of uh, oppression uh, under mu minority muslim rule over majority uh, hindu india then for centuries and you know a kind of traumatized history that they would try to sell but now they are not only working on that but they are working on different you know shades of this full spectrum you know well planned war for example uh, they are trying to use this as a tool of coercion in uh, the areas the political constituencies where uh, you know bjp does not have majority so to coerce the muslims to vote for them you know they are using force uh, in the political arena similarly what they are trying to tell their youth that these muslims and other minorities they are you know an obstacle in the economic prosperity of the majority hindu india so we must deny them the opportunities we must deny them the quality education so that they do not take their share which is which should be logically in any democratic setup uh, you know corresponding to 16 or 17% of a sizable minority as a minority and as a non hindu you cannot progress in india so you will be kept at the very basic so, level but sir. they are trying they are trying to convince you know overwhelmingly their youth that this cleansing is essentially required not only to compensate for their traumatized history but to have prosperities for hindus in india we have to you know eliminate and they are trying to you know not only uh, you know just uh, do genocide they are actually trying to Uh, eliminate these races from india and they want them either to convert uh, there have been incidences and they either want forced conversions to, yeah, are taking forced place conversions sir. are taking mm. place but uh, the earlier question uh, that you asked our friends in qatar uh, unfortunately uh, we have seen uh, in our recent history last 20 30 years even that uh, middle eastern countries they have not shown they haven't taken it as a muslim issue they would always say that this is an indian internal issue and if pakistan has some differences this is between a bilateral issue so primarily if you remember we used to always talk about kashmir in general yeah. because the problem was there now you talk about the muslims overall who are settled in india so assam the latest uh, development we all witnessed yeah. when muslims are being brutally killed and imagine that photographer was jumping on the dead body sir and he wasn't being stopped number 2 you talk about uh, this kashmir issue sir again a lot of problem out there genocide i would say is taking place uh, total disruption at all the level muslims are being targeted in particular sir most of these hurriyat leaders are sent in various jails starting from tihar all the way to all the way down i would say into the tamil areas also and then sir on top of that we also learn that it is not only about the muslims it's about the christians also so many churches have been torched exactly you talk about the operation blue star sir we all witnessed i mean there is this kind of an attitude of the extremist when indira gandhi was killed or rather indira gandhi was killed after that but before that when operation blue star took place more than 2006 were killed sir including children and women and elderly who were seeking refuge in the temples exactly. the golden temple 
and the tanks came in and imagine whatever happened and how can the Sikh community forget that? You talk about the Dalit sir that has been in issues. They are not even considered human beings. Exactly. Imagine or, or as they call it Shudras because this caste system was always in India. It never prevailed anywhere else. And this is at the core of, you know, Indian class society, uh, which, you know, RSS is a very strong proponent. So uh, uh, nobody other than a Hindu has any space. You know, just imagine uh, the Muslims, uh, the Indian Muslims, who, uh, you know, particularly are uh, uh, religious political parties than Jumiyat ulma hind for example, who opposed the idea of Pakistan, who were, you know, supporting Congress, uh, uh, even now, you know, they are under suspicion uh, just because they are Muslim, so they are under suspicion. So the CA, this amendment act, totally exactly. targeting the Muslims. Exactly. So uh, recently their president has also given statement, uh, uh, president of Jamiyat ulma hind uh, you know, they're condemning the same. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, this is happening in the broad daylight within the media, limelight and nobody is, you know, uh, I, I'm, I'm, it is heartening that Professor Gregory has, uh, you know, highlighted the issue. But what about uh, the other Human Rights Watch or uh, uh, the OIC for that matter? and uh, uh, other countries, you know, who would uh, pinpoint anything uh, and everything happening in Muslim countries uh, regarding minorities. If Absolutely. today we have just one statement of a fanatic against, uh, you know, minorities in Pakistan, that will be covered by, you know, all major channels uh, of uh, UK and Europe and America, but nobody's talking about I'll this. come to that story also, sir, where I would also consider the Americans exactly just like BJP. You talk about the, um, the indigenous Americans or the Red Indians or the people uh, who used to live there once the Americans in fact or these whites came over, whatever they did out there, sir, that was massacre again. You talk about Vietnam or you talk about uh, uh, the areas where the Americans in fact posed war. Uh, the way those countries, whether it was Cambodia or Vietnam or Laos, the way they were bombed, I mean, again, that would be considered as genocide. Whatever happened yeah. in Japan, sir? Yeah, yeah exactly. I mean, the only time that atomic uh, power, uh, you know, weapons were was used. used uh, it's, Once it, on 6th you know, Exactly. Uh, this is another instrument of, August, of genocide. Yeah. 45 and then after three days. And they knew what happened on the 6th. Despite that, they bombed the 2nd on exactly. Nagasaki on the 9th. And forget about these two, sir. There was carpet bombing. And nobody knows how many people were killed. And brutal tortures. I mean, Guantanamo Bay, sir. What is that all about? Yeah, so that exactly. is in Cuba. Just imagine, this is the mindset. So when you have a mindset of that sort, and, you know, forget about uh, those. I mean, whatever happened in Iraq and then in Afghanistan. Sir, they practically tried and tested, uh, you know, these uh, torture techniques on, on these people. That how long will a human being last? Uh, this kind exactly. of pain. So, unfortunately, this was so, so, so terrible. Now, Kureshi Saab, good to have you back, sir. Now, I would like you to complete your previous argument and then I'm going to have another question. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, thank you. I was trying to say that uh, India has long ago passed the test of uh, uh, what Saddam Hussein had uh, sanctions and he was hanged uh, for killing his own people, bombing its own people, and uh, crimes against humanity exporting terrorism. Uh, India has passed that test long time ago. Uh, what I want to hear from your uh, speakers is that there is an irresponsible attitude by the academics and the writers and the analysts and the journalists in Pakistan, for example. How much time, how much airtime Pakistani TV channels or media give to the Indian atrocities in Kashmir or Indian atrocities in various parts of, for example, Sikhs or Christians or Assam. How many people knows in Pakistan that how many uh, freedom struggles are going on in India at the moment? Your Pakistani media is already compromised. And, I have, and I'm telling you with full responsibility uh, because the, and that proves that the, uh, what we saw earlier on the is European information uh, watch has, has discovered those 700 websites. They were all these things were happening under your nose. Now, coming back to your colleague, as uh, your, your guest has mentioned about something about Middle East, why did the 
Middle Eastern countries object when anything happened to the Muslims. Forget about the Middle Eastern countries because they are the, the one who betrayed the Ottoman Empire, which resulted in the genocide of Palestinians, which resulted in the genocide of many more other countries by the British uh, in the Second World War, in the First World War, and uh, which continued even now. What happened in uh, Janine? What happened in Fallujah by the Americans? Americans have the, are the worst war criminals we saw in the modern history. Uh, were, and that mindset, uh, what, what, what I would like your analysts to think about is that what is it India has done that uh, this uh, democratic India, shining India model has gone in the background and the BJP fundamentalist extremist India run by Modi is coming forward. Why the France is pushing India to go to war with uh, China. Why uh, uh, the France is uh, pushing India when they know, oh, New York Times has already reported that 60% of the Indian weaponry of the Indian military forces is, weapon, is, is vintage, is scrap. Indian army is not able to fight uh, a one-front war, let alone two-front war with China or Pakistan. These are the facts. And, and one more thing I would like to mention here is that the Indian Muslims are not immigrants. They didn't come from Middle East. They are the people who converted to Islam hundreds of years ago. Similarly, uh, the Sikhs and the Christians who are also converted from the, from the... They are indigenous people. They cannot be sent to any other country. But the problem with Modi is their Israeli friends are advising them and, uh, and we also reported that the Golden Temple advisors were Israeli commandos who, and also the, there were some British commandos uh, uh, involved into that Blue Star operation uh, against the Sikhs as well, which was um, investigated by some human rights uh, organizations. But the ba Pakistan is a 200 million strong country. If Pakistani media make noise, surely the international media will pick up the stories, like they pick up other negative stories about Pakistan yeah, no, originating so, so, so from so the you're, Pakistan. You're absolutely media. spot on, you know, when you talk about this, this uh, uh, info issue, sir. I mean, those labs which were eventually uh, working for such a long time and spreading all sorts of wrong information about Pakistan. And uh, we all know that what was going on. I think media matters a lot, sir, and you are absolutely spot on when you talk about the uh, private media in Pakistan. Nobody talks about Kashmir unless and until something really big happens out there and then there would be a story and that also in the papers. Not Nobody is going to do a show on that, sir, because that doesn't give rating, unfortunately. But sir, there's another question now. Since you were talking about the Israeli kind or the Israeli sort of an approach towards uh, the other religions, sir, Sabra and Shakila, if you remember those two instances, those places, whatever happened out there, that was absolute genocide, sir, that took place. You talk about uh, the IS, for that matter, the way they killed the Yazidis and the way they, in fact, torched the villagers, picked up the women, that is also genocide, sir. And then you talk about um, the extremist um, Hindu leaders, sir, uh, they are exactly following the same line. And you rightly mentioned that this is something which is, you know, because the Israeli government believes in the elimination. They believe in killing. And this is exactly the same formula that the Indians have adopted and applied on Kashmir also, sir. Keep snatching their land, suppressing them, keep killing them. Nobody's going to talk about it. Nobody ever mentions, uh, you know, that the Israeli F-16s in fact pounded uh, Gaza and... <laughs> 600 people got killed, but they would make sure that if a single rocket, a homemade rocket is fired from the other side that lands in some sort of a desert, that becomes the lead story for Israel. Oh, we all went through certain torture and, you know, look, we heard about this and this is what happened. And nobody talks this, about the this reaction. Cowardly, uh, this cowardly approach by the Israelis or Zionist regime in uh, Palestine is, is condemnable. Uh, uh, now, let me tell you something, that after the World War II, the Nuremberg trial only had 26, 26 Nazis were convicted in the Nuremberg trial. So where, where the hell the rest of the Nazis go? They went to the United States. 
They are the people who are running the United States policy. They are continuing with the same policy which they started in Germany, uh, in German Nazi regime. Uh, and 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 I and I would say the 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 the, 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 the Holocaust, uh, the treatment of the, uh, the Jews and the others uh, or minorities in Europe, it has got nothing to do with the Middle East. It has got nothing to do with the Palestinians. It has nothing to do with Absolutely. with the Muslims. What Even we if see we that, believe that. X number of people were killed, which is reported by the Zionists, well, which I don't agree with. We don't, we don't but let's suppose if it was the way it is. We don't want to go into the numbers. But we will say to them, we'll say to the Israelis that Germany, is, you have, you point your fingers to the Germany. And now your German foreign minister was visiting re, in the recent attack on Gaza. You were shaking hand with them. So you can, you can hug your former killers. You can hug those people who are responsible for the killing of uh, your people. But you are, this is totally an unfair justification. You, the, the, and the wise Jews, I mean, I live in a very Jewish area in London, and there are a lot of people who are opposed to this whole idea of uh, having a, an Israel or, or a Jewish state because they, they believe that it is illegal, immoral, and unethical to have this remove other people from their land and bring them in. But what they, because they know that the Nazis are behind this. The current Israeli prime minister, uh, prime minister is American born. Uh, the previous one uh, was born in Poland. So, so we had these people who come from another country and occupied uh, someone else's land. But that is not the case in the Indian occupied Kashmir. That is not the case with the Indian Muslims. That is not the case with the people who are in Assam. They, they, they genetically or ethnically, they are indigenous people. But the reality is that the hundreds of tons of gold, which is owned by the Hindu Brahmins, who are running the show, who are running the Indian economy, they are the one who is running with the racist mindset. And uh, let me tell you, keep the record of this, what I'm going to tell you now. This is the beginning of the end of uh, an India India will be in a few hundred, maybe, small states very soon. And that's the model which has been uh, designed for the Indians. And if the Congress party or the other parties don't come forward now, because what Modi is doing is the, his actions are actions against the state. Modi is not against the Muslims. He is against the whole of the Indian state. The, the so-called democracy there. The Congress is not, the, the blue star happened against the Sikhs when the Congress was in power. Uh, so, so they are one and the same thing for the minorities uh, as we speak. So, so this is the time when Pakistani media, they, and I'm directly talking to them, they should come forward and talk about Kashmir and people should monitor Whoever the agency you have, they should monitor how much time which channel is giving to uh, our core issue, Kashmir. Because what we hear is a core issue, a statement coming from X person, Y person, and, and this is a 30-second broadcast. Uh, you are in a hurry, basically, and then you give some frivolous news about some, I don't know, some uh, something happened in uh, some far-flung area, some, some flood or something like this. So, so your media needs to review its strategy and policy towards Kashmir and Indian Muslims. You as a neighbor, uh, because not only you, Bangladesh has about 200 million Muslims. So this is 600, Muslim, uh, 600 million Muslims living in this region. And if they, if they decided to respond, the response will be, uh, will be really, really disastrous for the Hindu a 3% uh, Brahman regime, which is running the whole of the show, which is, has this racist mentality, which has this uh, whole uh, idea of superiority, uh, which we don't believe exactly as the way against the UN Charter. That prevails, unfortunately. You're a Brahman, you the man. Now, so one important area, and that is, uh, in fact, uh, important because when... Uh, you see something of, of this nature happening, sir, because Muslims are not like 1% or 2%. They're about 20%, and that's a big number, sir. Exactly. One out of five, when you talk about the total population of India. 
and sir muslims are always you know whenever they are shown in the movies whenever you know any thing related to them it is always a negative propaganda sir you know a gangster would be a muslim a killer would be a muslim a terrorist would be a muslim i mean that's how they plan it and that's how they they, they in fact uh, you know bring a bad name to a certain religion and this is a part of the overall ideology but sir talking about this particular issue that is that has that was there but now it, it's emerging it's 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 visible it can be seen can be felt so don't you think this is going to engulf the entire india and honestly speaking this is going to and i totally agree this is this could be the beginning of the end of india because this could lead to anything and everything sir muslims are scattered mm -hmm. all over yes i would uh, agree with dr qureshi and uh, before i fully answer your question i also agree with his initial observation that our private uh, uh, electronic media they are not doing any service to the cause of uh, kashmir or muslims in india uh, we are you know if you see the prime time uh, shows they are all focused on local politics on petty issues uh, just because they are the talk of the town and they get them uh, better rating so these media people make them the talk of the town exactly nobody wants to hear what somebody has been doing but, or uh, somebody uh, i to. think if if it wasn't for the pakistan television as a state media probably we won't be listening or hearing anything uh, about uh, uh, the plight of uh, muslims in india so uh, this is a trend uh, which must be checked by the concerned uh, authorities uh, like pamra or the concerned ministry and they should monitor and regulate at least a part of that time f towards this national and regional cause because then obviously we are in a position to exert some moral pressure and bring the uh, uh, continue to you know highlight the uh, issue in the a broader uh, sense to the world uh, another similarity issue uh, of uh, israeli approach uh, in india uh, you know it is uh, the tacit approval of americans uh, uh, you, in uh, israelis have that they have the tacit approval of america and france and uh, other european powers and similarly uh, this they have these assurances they have given to the modi government that you can do anything we will weaponize you we will st strengthen your economy and you whatever you want to do with your indigenous population that's not so sir, sir, there is a plan propaganda against the muslims forget about india for a while sir let's talk about the overall uh i mean because sir, I, i really feel the pain you know where a certain minority is subjected to torture i mean few planes take off from uh, israel and they bomb certain cities and they would target schools universities hospitals libraries exactly see very planned targeting and then they would kill the youth the youth would be targeted in particular sir forget about the elimination of the leadership they have done that but sir nobody talks about that and as i was earlier also mentioning that you know a single homemade rocket this big is fired from that side that becomes the lead you story see, uh, this is this, so unfortunate sir this is uh, after the you know uh, sophistication of air power uh, the modern uh, uh, targeting philosophy uh, which was uh, you know given by colonel john warden uh, in the first gulf war and practiced in uh, all the uh, theaters uh, uh, after ever that. since hmm. after, uh, you know it has a five ring of uh, you know targets and uh, the fielded forces is of, of the least priority by the way you know this is very focused targeting through precision guided munitions and they target those vital things which have repercussions for the growth for the mental and social well being of that complete uh, you know society or the nation so targeting economic centers targeting the go. nodes of yes. uh, you know uh, uh, intelligentsia targeting the networking that comes on their priority because fielded forces will be useless if the decision makers and the future decision makers they are eliminated if the universities if the colleges if the places where their future brains are being you know developed if you destroy that what fielded forces will be able to do i totally agree conflict? with you sir totally agree with you on that 
because uh, there, there is a plan. There is always a plan and, and that uh, is executed in the, such a manner. Talking about the you know, uh, history, uh, 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 it just reminds me uh, from Dr. Qureshi's talk that uh, uh, after 9-11, uh, we were on a visit to states, an official visit, and we were visiting the Capitol Hill. And our host was discussing, uh, you know, uh, because we had recently uh, seen uh, uh, the 9-11 uh, monument at uh, Pentagon. So uh, we were taken to uh, uh, a preserved uh, gallery uh, of Capitol Hill, which was burnt by uh, uh, Britishers in their uh, war. And I asked them one question that uh, you have reconciled with the nation, you know, who destroyed the very icon of your democracy, the Capitol Hill. But you are not trying to reconcile with an allegedly, you know, terrorist act which whether it has been done or not, nobody is sure. He just smiled as the Americans are, they are very good listeners and he had no answer. The only difference was because that was their own, you know, ancestral country, Europe or uh, yes. UK and uh, Muslims, they have always been their enemy throughout the history. So, and they will continue to remain so because this is what is a Quranic injunction also. You cannot, you know, Yehudo Nisara, they can't be our friends. So. I fully agree with Dr. Saab that this is our responsibility to fight exactly, it out exactly. through media or whatever you know peaceful means we have available Absolutely. to us. Absolutely, and unfortunately, we have totally failed. And on we that should front. not be apologetic on that. You know, that's the main issue. That's our right. This is our right. This is a right of every human being under the Charter of United Nations. So mm. why are we being apologetic to raise the voice in favor of those Muslims' plight in India or elsewhere? We should do that and we should, I mean, whatever our economic uh, conditions are, what worse could happen to us? Exactly. So that should not mm. be a showstopper for us to raise our voice on every forum and on every possible, you know, avenues uh, to support our Muslim brothers and Absolutely, sisters. Absolutely, sir. But unfortunately, I'm totally running out of time, sir. I was just told to wrap up the show. But thank, thank you. you very much, sir, for your presence. My pleasure. And Kurey Saab, it's always good to have you in the show, sir. And I love reading your... Uh, uh, articles also that you send me, sir, and the program clips, and I, 99.9% .9 I agree with your uh, statements on uh, certain issues. Well, thank you very much once again, sir, for your presence. And uh, this is all we have uh, for this hour. I'll see you, inshallah, tomorrow at 8 of 5 p.m. Till then, you take good care. Khuda Hafiz.